Hello and welcome to all of my Korea Overlanders. Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for being here today. My name is Ben and today we're walking into Gorilla Camping. That's right. Uh, I had a uh, invitation. Uh, I asked uh, permission and they invited me to come in uh, for recording their store here in Palgongsan. Now, what I wanted to do uh, is just make a note of two things. First of all, this is going to be a little bit of a comparison video to one that I did back in the summer of 2021 when I was uh, recording in Covia Camping. And at the end of the video, I'm going to do kind of a comparison between the two stores. And there's one big thing between those two stores that I think is important for you to know about. Um, if you have not seen that video, boom! right up there in the corner for you or maybe one of those corners i'm not sure um and check out that video i will post that uh so you can do your own comparison i think it'll be quite a big difference between uh, when you see the covia and you see the gorilla camping you'll be able to see uh, a big difference there so stay tuned for the epilogue and for gorilla camping here we go Hello and welcome to Korea Overlander. My name is Ben and today, oh my God, I've got a great video for you. Um, we are in the, we are up on the, well, I am up on the second floor of Gorilla Camping here in Palgong San Daegu. And I've been given the opportunity by the owner and manager uh, to come in and record the store for you, just to give you a sense of what this particular camping store is. Um, there's some interesting differences between this store and uh, Covia, which I did in the summertime that I want to point out uh, to you. I'm also going to, at their request, uh, point out some particular featured equipment that they want me to um, show you uh, in particular. Um, I think that's more than fair, uh, you know, because they've given me the opportunity to come in and record here uh, for free. So I have no problem uh, just pointing out a few pieces of equipment that they want to uh, make mention of. I will, as the video goes on, tell you exactly what pieces they want me to feature so that way you understand. I also want to tell you that I'm not being paid in any way, shape or form uh, with this video. Uh, it is my own review and I am very, very grateful to the people who are the owners of the establishment to allow me to come in on this Wednesday morning. Whew, chilly Wednesday morning. So you know what? Let's get started. Now, as you can see, up on the second floor is the tent room. And as I turn around, you're going to see a whole host of lovely looking pieces of equipment for you to uh, check out here at Gorilla Camping. There are a number of different tents here of different sizes and different prices. We've got one here uh, that's in the $300 mark. We've got another one over here that's uh, closer to uh, 700,000 won. Um, we've got tents that have multi rooms in it, um, like this one right here. Um, I'm going to be kind of talking into the camera while pointing things into the background here. So this one right here is a lovely, nice, multi-sized room here. You can see that it's got this lovely awning. And then inside and over here is the, um, is the tent area. And this is uh, more than enough probably for four people. Um, probably two or three small kids plus two adults, I think would be great in here. So yeah, you can see that there's lots of different uh, tents and uh, and sleeping. Ooh, I almost tripped over something there. Um, that's one. 
So this tent behind me is a little bit different in that it's more of a vestibule. And this is actually one that the people here at Guerrilla Camping wanted me to feature. This is called a, the company's called Lugi, L-U-G-I something. L-U-I-G-I, -I. sorry about that, L-U-I-G-I. -I. Now what's interesting about this one is that it's more of a vestibule rather than a tent. So if you're looking for something that is kind of at the beach, you're looking for something for day trips, nothing perhaps overnight, this might be a good particular product. Now. It's got a see-through, it's got a plastic um, wall here on the one side, and on the uh, other two walls and the door is the, uh, you know, the, the material. Up on top, it has a huge rooftop skylight. I mean, this is just massive compared to other tents that you might see. Uh, this might be a particularly good tent in the summertime when you're outside and you want to do um you might want to do uh, uh stargazing uh at late at night but you want to keep the mosquitoes at bay this might be something that could be uh, particularly useful now another thing that i just realized that this might be good for is uh, if you have one of those small camping stoves in the center of the tent this would uh, give you that fire campfire experience but maybe keep the bugs out of your hair and body so yeah this this uh, is an interesting little setup um, this one here it's uh, 320 by 320 by 210 so it is a fairly big square size uh, 2 meters and 10 2 meters, 10 centimeters uh, tall is more than enough for me to stand in. Uh, this one is listed at 298,000 won. So not a bad price for something like this. Now, can you camp in this? Um, probably you can, to be quite honest. Um, in terms of an overnight, it might be a little big. But if, you, if you're looking for something that, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, you know, a floor in it, uh, you might have some, uh, some, um, uh, small little camping beds instead of being right on the, f right on the ground. This could work. Um, you can't have any kind of, um, you can't have any, um, any wood stove in here. There's no area for a, a roof, uh, for a, a stove pipe in here, but certainly maybe for winter camping, uh, might be okay, who knows? It's an interesting, an interesting design, uh, to say the least. We've got so much stuff to go, let's keep going.
situations, of course, have really improved over the last few years. Of course, many of you already know that. Like this one right here. Now, this isn't a featured product, but of course, they did want me to talk about lanterns in lighting. And this is certainly one of many different products that are really, really useful. Well, why is that? Of course, many of you know that LED allows for uh, longer lighting uh, with uh, less battery power and it's USB chargeable, which means that you're not gonna have to run through a whole myriad of AA batteries to keep your stuff charged over the evening and through your camping experience. Uh, something like this, a portable battery pank has uh, I think it's 20,000 mini ampules, which is really nice. Let me just take a look. Um, yeah, it's uh, the battery is a 20,000 milliampule battery, uh, which is, you know, that's huge. I mean, that's twice as much as what you're probably going to have as uh, a phone battery charger, you know, so it should last you. Uh, at least uh, the night and then you know plug it in the next day either to uh, a USB socket in your car or uh, maybe an external battery to uh, charge it up uh, during the daytime and you're good to go for the next night. What camping experience that you remember way back when would be complete without one of these? That's right. These are, if this is not a flashback to your camping memories when you were 10 years old, I don't know what could be. Sierra Cups. Um, I have a set of four of these. Uh, different kinds. These, the ones I have at home are stainless steel. These are titanium, uh, 300, um, 300 milliliters. Um, yeah, your one-stop uh, drinking, eating, whatever. Uh, the set of four uh, is 38,000 won. It's this one right here. Uh, Ebenaki is the name of the company. Um, yeah, Sierra Cups. You just can't go wrong with those. So of course, you can't go camping without some utensils for all of that good camping food. One of the products that they wanted me to feature on this video was this one in particular. This is 33,501. It's a called a Mad Dog Camp. And this thing is packed. Uh, not only does it come in a very, very nice carry-all, like very contained on the back, got a sorry for the phone in the back it's got a uh, a glove for you to protect your hands while you're cooking awesome uh, how many times have you burned your hands I know I've done it a lot uh, but on the inside look at this it's got everything that you could possibly need on the one side it's got knife scissors it's got a rice spoon it's got a cutting board 
Over here, it's got stainless steel uh, flipper, ladle, spoon, tongs. Down at the bottom, it's got little jars here for your spices that you want to use for your um, for your uh, well for your herbs and spices. It also has a set of gigantic. Uh, tweezers uh, you know, duh, duh, duh. not really but um, giant tweezers for uh, turning uh, flipping and that sort of thing so you never know what you're gonna need those for so yeah a great little setup uh, it's got everything in there well contained um, one of the things I have which is sitting right here uh, this little thing right here is what is this this is 17,001 uh, this is just simply your uh, basic cutlery so, you know, for basically, you know, you're going to pay 33 for a full pack and you've got everything contained versus 17, which is just the cutlery. Now, I like this because, well, I don't know. I just, one of the things I really like about these ones, I don't know why, but the holes in the fork, I don't know. It just gets me. So that's why I bought it because it was a nice one. I did purchase this quite a, uh, I think I got this in the summertime. So I've had it for a little while and I really do enjoy it. So something for you to keep in mind as well. Um, there's all sorts of cutlery, uh, pots, pans, plates, cups, you name it, it's here. There is so much uh, that you can get at, these little, uh, at this little store here. Uh, here is another one right here. Now this is similar to the big one I showed you. Um, this is... Uh, quite a bit bigger uh, now it does have some tools but it gives you space for a whole host of other things that you might have already at home that you could put in here and there you go you're all set up and it does come in this nice little case it's got a um, silicone uh, cutting pad in the back as well for you um, for those of you who want to go more on the um, uh, perhaps the natural side. We also have something like this. Uh, this is uh, wooden cutlery. So it has, um, what is it? It's the box is wooden and then it's got uh, chopsticks and uh, other things. It kind of looks like this. Let me show you right here. So this is what it looks like in here. It's got the uh, wood handles on it, which is actually really nice. Um, not full tang. Uh, probably what is that uh th maybe a three-quarter tang construction on the piece but it does have the rivets that go all the way through so fairly good construction and it's got that nice uh wood case for it as well it also comes of course with a set of chopsticks All right, thank you so much everybody for sticking to the end of the video. I do hope that the chapter buttons have helped you navigate this longer video, uh, but there's so much in there that I did want to uh, put in and give uh, Guerrilla Camping a video due diligence uh, and, a, and a service to them, of course, uh, for all of you. Now, the one thing I wanted to mention that I did not mention in this video is the niche market between Covia and between Gorilla Camping. Because there are there there is in fact two different things going on here. And I just want to make a point of letting you know which store to go for what stuff. Because I think it's important uh, for you to be aware of that. So First of all, Gorilla Camping is a fantastic store and Covia is equally a fantastic store. Neither of those stores are bad. They've got great stuff across the board. The difference between them two, between them two, between the two, I should say, has to do with the niche that they have carved out for themselves and what market they are going to. 
Covia, if you've taken a look at that video, is more of a technical store. And what I mean by that is um, there are products and there are things in that store that are simply not in guerrilla camping. For example, uh, you've got rock climbing gear, backpacks, uh, uh, down sleeping bags, lightweight equipment, if you are going on a trek or you want to have equipment that you want to reduce weight on, that's probably the one to go with. However, on the other side of the aisle, I guess you could say, is guerrilla camping. And I think guerrilla camping's niche is a car camping um, casual enthusiast. And that is by no means a bad thing. People nowadays have really started, especially in Korea, have really started wanting to pursue an outdoor life, especially over the last couple of years with COVID-19 and all sorts of restrictions. Getting out into the woods, getting out into nature has been a great thing for so many people. And I do encourage you to do that. And guerrilla camping has been around for a while, but that niche is definitely the car camping segment. Now, does that mean that you can't buy car camping stuff at Covia? Of course not. But it's just how they have branded themselves as a car camping, uh, as a car camping store. And I think with a lot of people wanting to take creature comforts with them uh, when they are car camping, Guerrilla camping is probably the place where you'll want to go if that's what you intend to do. It's not something that you're going to be spending a lot of money doing, but you want to have a few odds and ends uh, while you're out there. Covia camping, on the other hand, you're going to drop a lot more money because the materials, uh, the materials are different. Uh, some materials are better. But that's because you're going for a totally different type of uh, a totally ty different type of environment. Think if you are in North America or you've come from you know North America, Canada, the U.S. in particular. Imagine the difference between going to North Face and going to Coleman, right? That's the difference for you in Canada, where I'm from. Imagine going to uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of a. I'm trying to think of. Uh, imagine going to Mountain Equipment Co-op or going to Canadian Tire. Right? It's that sort of difference. It does not mean that the. That it doesn't mean that the quality is any different in terms of what you're buying, uh, because it's all valued to how much you're spending. But that is a big difference between the two stores, and I do want you to be aware of that. Again, I love both of those stores. I think each of them have their own unique uh, niche uh, market that they are seeking after. I encourage you to go seek out both of those stores. Check them out for yourself. And I do want to say a special thank you to Gorilla Camping for giving me the opportunity to come in and video and record on that Wednesday. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a great day. See you soon. And don't forget... Live life well. Peace.